Hello everyone. Today I'll be talking about our work on inframarginality audit of group fairness. I am Arpita. This is joint work with Siddharth Burman, Amit Deshpande, and Amit Sharma. Here's the outline of my talk. I'll first describe the problem setting. Then I'll deep dive into the key contributions of this paper, namely a generalized definition of inframarginality. Then I'll talk about how inframarginality and accuracy are related. Finally, I'll outline a workflow for auditing classifiers in terms of inframarginality. I'll conclude with some open questions. Now, uh, let's start with a typical binary classification scenario. Here, an input X is drawn from the input space script S, and we assume that there's a binary classifier C that maps this input to either a positive label or a negative label. Now, we also assume that there are true outcome probabilities Px star associated with each x. So this Px star can be interpreted as an inherent probability of the individual x to be in the positive class. We also assume that there is a true outcome label Yx star, which is Bernoulli drawn with probability px star. So basically yx star is equal to one with probability px stars and it's equal to zero with probability one minus px star. The goal of classification is to find c such that uh, cx is as close as possible to yx star. And this is captured by this matrix accuracy, which is the expected number of individuals whose cx is exactly equal to yx star. But what about fairness? So there has been a growing concern on the fact that if accuracy is the only matrix that should be used to assess performance of a classifier. And in this regard, there has been various notions of fairness which are defined. And uh, in this talk, we'll look at some of these fairness notions. In this work, we mainly focus on individual fairness where the idea is to treat similar individuals similarly. For example, let's say you have two instances, x and x prime, and they are somehow similar. Then their corresponding predictions from a classifier C should be also similar. So Cx and Cx prime should also be similar. Uh, that's the idea. So on a similar note, there has been another fairness notion defined um, in the literature, which is known as single threshold fairness. So here the idea is to take decisions using a single threshold P tau on the true outcome probability Px star. Let's look at this graph to understand single threshold fairness. So here we plot the distribution over a population z equal to one and a population z equal to zero separately. So we are here we are assuming that population is divided into two groups uh, denoted as z equal to zero and z equal to one. Now note that uh, the population distribution for z equal to one uh, shows that uh, there are like most of the people in this group z equal to one has px star values around 0.75. And similarly, for z equal to zero, most of the people have px star close to 0 0.25. So this is the scenario. Now, single threshold fairness would mean that uh, there would be a single threshold, let's say tau equal to 0.5, and all decisions should be based on this particular threshold, irrespective of their z values. So let's call this uh, decisions as fair labels, fx star. So this is basically obtained by um, by this indicator function that whether px star is greater than tau or not. And uh, note that it does not involve any uh, group membership uh, inclusion. So when you have px star greater than tau, uh, fx star is positive, px star less than or equal to tau, fx star is negative. The group fairness notions are known to be at odds with a single threshold fairness notion. Now let's look at an example of a group fairness notion, which is statistical parity. 
Now, according to this, uh, classifier is said to be fair when the fraction of positive outcomes of a group z equal to 1 is equal to the fraction of positive outcomes of a group z equal to 0. Now, uh, let's look at this graph again and um, assume that there is a classifier which is threshold based and deterministic and it is allowed to have different threshold for two different groups. So, uh, for example, let's say there's a threshold T1 and whenever uh, any individual from group Z equal to 1 has a P star value of greater than tau 1, then they are given a positive level, otherwise they are given a negative level. Similarly, tau 0 decides uh, for group Z equal to 0 who would be in positive side and who, who is going to be in negative side. Now, note that if you want to maximize accuracy, subject to the fact that the fraction of positive outcome for z equal to 1 and 0 should be equal, then you might end up having these two threshold lines um, and this uh, shaded area are equal. Now, let's keep two, these two graphs side by side. Um, so, the first graph shows the single threshold fair uh, decisions where there is one threshold uh, 0.5 and every individual whose p star x is greater than 0.5 are considered to be positive uh, and uh, everyone else is in the negative class. However, imposing group fairness ends up having two thresholds and um, you see that there's a fraction of population who are given a negative label now um, and these people were given a positive label according to single threshold fairness, or let's call it fair labels. Um, now, we, what we want to do is uh, measure this fraction of people who are getting a different label because of imposing group fairness. And that's where we end up defining uh, this degree of inframarginality. So here, according uh, to this definition, uh, threshold tau is given and there's a parameter epsilon. So the degree of inframarginality uh, is denoted by eta epsilon c for a classifier c and it is defined using this expression which can be interpreted as an extent to which the classifier's output cx differ from the ideal fair labels fx stars for those individuals whose px stars are more than epsilon distance away from the threshold t. Now let's go back to the graph to show how do we interpret inframarginality when epsilon is equal to zero. So epsilon equal to zero means that we are looking at all the data points together and then trying to find the fraction of people for whom cx differs from fx star values. And this leads to this particular red dotted region. Similarly, we will now see what happens when epsilon is equal to 0.1. So here we are going to look at all px stars values which are more than 0.1 distance away from the threshold tau. And let's assume the threshold tau is 0.5. So we would look at all the population which uh, are from 0.6 onwards and look at the fraction of that population which um, uh, differs in terms of their cx and fx star values. Now note that these values are important to understand the effect of group fairness uh, when we consider single threshold fairness as the fair labels. Thus our contribution is to conceptualize these ideas by defining the degree of inframarginality and providing theoretical guarantees around the closeness between inframarginality and accuracy. We also provide a methodology to use these concepts for auditing a given classifier. Furthermore, we show how to carry out the audit on real-world datasets. Finally, we also show how to find optimal classifiers using inframarginality as a constraint. Now let's recall the definition of degree of inframarginality. So here we are looking at expectation of mistakes that the classifier makes uh, from an ideal classifier, uh, which was uh, single threshold based. Now let's look at how inframarginality is related to accuracy. 
Now for that, uh, we define inframarginality for epsilon equal to zero. And this is the expected number of individuals for whom the their uh, CX, so the uh, prediction given by a classifier C, differs from the fair labels FX star. And uh, let's classifiers error be denoted by delta zero C. So here uh, it shows the expected number of individuals for whom the predicted labels CX differs from its YX star values. And note that this delta zero C is the standard classification error. And this is actually equal to one minus accuracy. Now, um, let's also define Bayes' error and as delta zero star. And this is the expectation of the number of individuals for whom fx star and yx star differs. Now, given classifiers error and Bayes' error, we show that we can bound inframarginality. So here, the upper bound shows that if you have a very high accuracy, that is, if you have um, low error rate, then the inframarginality is also low. And the lower bound shows that as C deviates from the highest possible accuracy, its degree of inframarginality also increases. Now, this dependency between inframarginality and accuracy also uh, shows that uh, inframarginality has some trade-off with group fairness since accuracy is known to have some trade-offs with group fairness directly. So now let's look at an example to understand how inframarginality and group fairness can have a trade-off. So let's look at this example. Uh, so this is a synthetically generated data set with two features, V and U, and this is a scatter plot of all the data points here. So let's say there are two types of uh, groups here, Z equal to one and Z equal to zero. So Z equal to one is the red group for which the uh, positive and the negative labels, so positive labels are plus and negative labels are zero. So they kind of overlaps and there is no linear classifier that can easily classify this positive and zero labels. On the other hand, let, uh, let's look at this blue group, which is Z equal to zero. They are quite linearly separable. So imagine if you have a hyperplane, uh, which is around V equal to 75, then this is going to uh, accurately classify uh, the blue uh, individuals. However, for red individuals, it will not be that accurate. So. Uh, in other words, if we have to maximize accuracy subject to some group fairness, here let's consider the group fairness to be uh, equality of, uh, let's say, accuracy. Then if you remember the previous, um, so the vertical line would have had 100% accuracy for the blue group, but only around 50 or 60% accuracy for the red group. Uh, however, if you want the accuracy to be equal, you can see that it would lead to a classifier like this, where the accuracy is kind of 50% for the blue group and it's also 50% for the red group. To see the effect of inframarginality on group fairness, we plot this graph, which compares inframarginality across various degrees of group fairness. So we uh, basically use an algorithm called MetaFair, which is given by Celis et al. And there is a parameter called Lambda in this algorithm. Um, and as we increase this value of Lambda, the classifier becomes more and more group fair. So for Lambda equal to 0.0, .0 the classifier simply maximizes accuracy and imposes no group fair constraint. And with Lambda equal to 0.2, there's a um, small penalty on, for not being group fair. However, for lambda equal to point e, there's a very high penalty for not being group fair. So now let's look at this graph. Um, so for lambda equal to zero, when we are simply trying to maximize accuracy, we see that the inframarginality is uh, nearly zero. However, when we increase lambda to point two, uh, we find uh, that the classifier is a bit inframarginal around the threshold 
bandwidth um, up to 0.2 and after that the inframarginality is again nearly zero and uh, similarly we see that as we in keep increasing this lambda value higher and higher it, the inframarginality also keeps increasing um, note that when lambda is equal to 0.8 that is there's a high penalty imposed on for not being group fair then the classifier almost starts becoming like a random classifier and the inframarginality here is almost around 0.5 and this is basically due to the reason um, due to the fact how the data set is created uh, so you have if you recall the last slide the data set was created in a way so that when you're trying to be most group fair, you would end up having only 0.5 accuracy and it turns out to also give like 0.5 inframarginality for um, this case. The question now is that how to uh, audit inframarginality with real world data sets when PX stars are not given to us. So what we propose is that uh, we can estimate p hat x that maximizes accuracy and then compute uh, the fair labels f hat x by putting a threshold of half on this p hat x note that this half is not strict so we can have different threshold um, in, in in place of half now after we have defined f hat now we plot this surrogate uh, inframarginal value which is eta hat which is the expected uh, value of the difference between cx and f hat x uh, so this replaces f star x and also we replace p star with p hat x that maximizes accuracy now uh, the reason we can use the surrogate instead of uh, the actual um, eta epsilon c is because of the theorem where we sh so show that the um, hat eta the surrogate value is actually bounded by the true eta value uh, by some additive error uh, using this theorem we now show how we can audit real world data set so in this slide i'm showing you the results that we have got for the adult income data set so what we do is we um, we have compared several group fair algorithms and um, plotted their inframarginality values of course these are the surrogate inframarginality values and we see that adversarial deviasing has the lowest uh, inframarginality among other classifiers uh, followed by reweighing and then uh, reject option classifier and metafair with lambda equal to 0.8 shows the highest amount of inframarginality. Now, um, one can look at the actual statistical parity difference as well as the inframarginality values to kind of figure out which um, classifier should be best used for this data set. For example, here we see that reviewing has zero statistical parity difference and it also has um, somewhat lower inframarginality. So maybe this is one of uh, the classifier that could be used for this income data set. So the takeaway from this uh, talk is that the inclusion of inframarginality as an individual fairness matrix uh, should be considered in the growing work on auditing fairness for algorithmic bias. Some of the open questions here are whether there is any theoretical dependence that can be shown between various uh, group fairness notions and inframarginality. And second is um, our work do not capture the true risk due to external interventions or omitted variables. So audits for inframarginality with this factors into consideration may be a good direction to look at. So here's the summary of um, our contribution. So we provide the definition for the degree of inframarginality. We show how inframarginality and accuracy are related to each other. We provide a method for auditing inframarginality and show how to do it on real world data sets. 
we also have some results on finding optimal classifiers under inframarginality constraints which um, i have skipped in this talk finally we would like to uh, gratefully acknowledge the following grants that brings us to the end of the talk thank you so much for your attention